Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an Alan pilot and today we are going to have our very first look at the Embraer Phantom 100 by Coxboer. Coxboer has been previously known for their Citation Mustang which turned out a really nice aircraft after a couple of updates. So today let's see how their follow-up the Phantom 100 is going to fly. Needless to say that I do have high expectations of this airplane but it is worth mentioning that this is the very first version released so we are flying the 1.0 basically and therefore if there are things that still need improvements then we shall not be surprised either. So a uh, first look at the outside model, first impression for sure is really good, it looks like a beautiful model and it's very nice just to have that Embraer look of a business jet in our sim. So. Before we start with the walk around and stuff, a quick comment here on some of the data we have available. So right now we do have a couple page manual available from the uh, download and on the developers discord as well. And on the discord they also have a reference and performance speeds document where we got things like our takeoff speeds and standard takeoff and standard approach profiles and the landing speeds on. So that much about the documentation. There is one really cool feature that we've already seen in their Citation Mustang, which we are going to have a look at over here momentarily. But before we do that, let's do a quick walk around and have a look at the external model of the Phantom 100. As always, since people are still asking, I am using my drone camera set up with a 3.0 speed and 45 degree zoom speed so or even a 2.0 speed for a small aircraft like that one and a rotation speed at 45 roughly and that is how i'm doing my walk arounds here okay so we are going to start right over here at the cockpit and just look at that i'm going really close up and it's really high level of detail that does come at a price though the airplane takes approximately 14 gigabyte of uh, space on your computer but the results we're getting for that are looking absolutely phenomenal uh, looking at the level of detail we've got on this airframe over here so really really good looking and very high resolution which does come at a price of 14 gigabyte on your hard drive so a quick look around the landing gear and also into the gear bay there where we can well good level of detail good looks on the uh, main landing gear over here and then we can move further to the front and again just have a look at that level of detail here going close up to the screws and stuff like that that's insane it's really insane just look at the latch over here that looks like very very high definition so overall very good um modeling done there also look at the uh, window up here again very good level of detail on there and moving down over here that does carry forward into the main airframe have a look at the uh, windows over here and then we can move along the wing over to the wing tip quick look down here at the lights again very high level of detail and the uh, static discharge static discharge is looking good as well okay so then we can move on towards the back of the plane let's have a look at the engine then so that is our engine over here it looks like there is a little bit of a hole everywhere over here now look at the engine outlet again la same level of detail looking very very good all over okay stabilizer is looking good as well we've got the antennas over there we've got the vor antenna over there and then we can move further forward to the front again and quick look into the um well what i'm even saying here honestly this is just an excellent looking model there is really not a lot i can even say about that look at the landing gear over here there could be a little bit more dirt over here i suppose because it is very low lying gear with very low lying attachments so i'm german i do need to complain about something and that's something that i've just chosen is um, that there could be a little bit more dirt on there but apart from that a superbly looking external model of this Embraer Phantom 100 by Coxpur. Okay, then let's move inside and we are going to have a look at the cockpit as well. So very first thing that strikes me over here obviously is that huge size of our G1000 displays that we got in here. Obviously they are the main feature of this cockpit and they do use the working title avionics. So we've got a very good level of uh, detail overall here in that cockpit. 
Okay, so, um, then just zooming in a little bit, those textures here, well, from the very close zoom, they do look a little strange over here in the edges, but if you look from a standard level of zoom, then they look absolutely superb, if you ask me. The same goes over if we go over the side of the aircraft, again, the only thing I'm missing here is a click spot on the Oxygen Master tested, but apart from that, very high level of detail everywhere, and that really goes regardless if you are looking down there to the throttle, if you're looking to the side consoles, if you're looking to the overhead panel, that's a very good level of detail about everywhere in the cockpit. And it's not just the cockpit looking very good, it's also the cabin. So if we go to the back over here a little bit and have a look over the passenger cabin, that's what it looks like. Let's just take a seat somewhere here in the back, in one of the passenger seats. So right now, let's... Oh, look at that. Uh, the sound plays of the table extending, but the table itself doesn't. Probably something they still need to uh, work on for um, their early versions. I mean, this is the very first release version of the plane. Okay, so, um, apart from that, neatly looking though. Good level of detail, and whoopsie, didn't mean to do that. If we just have a look over here, the um, no PD signs and the fasten seatbelt signs, they do actually work, which I'm going to show you when we turn the um, electrical power on. So. Good eye candy on the airplane. Let's see, can we open the, um... No, we can't. Okay. We can't open the bar. Ah, uh, it shall be fine. Okay. Um... Then, getting right over to the cockpit. Let's take a seat on the captain's seat again. And... The manual is a little sparse in that there is not all that much information available on how to fly the airplane. But there is this which is the uh, normal checklist of the airplane in a laminated version that you got right here in the cockpit. And that's the same that you also have in the product manual, so you can either have this over here, or you can just pull it up to your iPad and use it from there. In either case, that is how you um, learn to fly the aircraft. So that is all that you have available, on top of that document that you can find on the developer's Discord, which I can completely recommend you to have a look at. Okay, so let's go ahead then and do the cockpit and safety inspection checklist. Quarter slide check, emergency door lock and pin removed, emergency door secured and locked, water barrier as required, uh, documents, manuals and charts checked on board, oxygen equipment checked, oxygen bottle valve. Okay. Push to, it's push to restart, supply a control knob, packs auto. So that is down here, and that's going to be PAX Auto. Okay, oxygen mask regulator, check 100%. That is not simulated here, unfortunately. Um, electrical panel, check. Now, it would be nice to get some information on what check actually means, because when we look at the electrical panel down here, we've got the batteries on off, we do have an ELEC emergency button, then we've got that bus tie over here, and then we've got the generators and the GPU button. But how am I supposed to know if the generators are supposed to be an off or an APU, if you know what I mean? So, electrical panel checked, yeah, it's checked, but what exactly am I supposed to check on? Circuit breakers checked, fuel pumps, auto. So, they are located over here, and they are in auto. Then we've got the uh, fuel transfer pushed out, ELT armed. Okay, so, fuel transfer is out, ELT is armed. Yeah, that click, click spot is inverted, that's why I well, just couldn't move it. Okay, so ELT armed. Okay. Push a cutout is pushed out. Hydraulic pump. Auto. Gas lock pin is removed. Okay, rudder gas lock released. Then heating panel. Again, what am I supposed to check here? I do suppose ADS um, AOA auto, but how am I supposed to know? Okay, ice protection panel checked, all off. Then landing gear lever is down. Pressurization panel over here. So, what am I supposed to check on there? Okay, again, only checked. Okay, well, in that case, we'll just put it to um, bleed both, mode auto, I suppose. Okay, air conditioning panel as required. So we'll leave the, uh, tell you what, we're going to put those fans off, it's not all that warm. Mode can go to auto, temperature controls in the middle should be roughly fine. Okay, um, then moving on, fire extinguishing panel 
check that is down here and it's all off looking good um, start and stop knobs are on stop engine ignition oh, sorry flap lever first zero park and brake is set and then seats and seat belt condition yeah okay well suppose we are strapped in anyway so that is not going to matter too much okay cool so with that we are pretty much done with the cockpit and cabin safety inspection checklist so the rest of the checklists because it is just a little bit easier to be looking everywhere here the rest of them i got on my ipad now so i'm going to put this away to the side and we'll uh, start flying the plane like that okay so at this point funnily enough we put a lot of switches into the auto positions but we still didn't put the power on makes me wonder if the um, electrical panel check further at the top meant that we were supposed to put the um, power on at that point but anyway in the before star trek list we'll surely get to that point okay so let's go ahead with the b4 start checklist then so it's a wind and aircraft orientation check within start limits gear pins and steering link three on board and connected maintenance status checked we are check lock checked flight lock checked light so we'll put on the nav light and since we don't have beacon over here we're also going to put on the strobe light okay then engine ignition auto thrust levers idle batteries here we are on okay ground power unit is not available and off park and brake set circuit breakers check navigation database now here we go okay let's see well, it expires 2031. Okay, we'll just leave it at that, I suppose. So, NAV database is checked. Oxygen mask, flow microphone check, CBR test, pass. Where can we actually do the CBR test? Suppose it's got to be down here. But. Oh, yeah, here we go. But over here, I can erase the CBR, but can I test it somehow? Doesn't look like it. Okay, well, we'll just assume CBR test pass then. Okay, fuel quantity and balance. Let's have a look at that. We got 690 pounds per side, and that is perfect for our needs. Okay, oxygen pressure verify, test panel test. So, where can we find the test panel? It's about the only thing I couldn't find in this airplane yet. But I suppose it shall be okay. Is it? Yeah, can't find the test panel. If you guys know where it is, do put it in the comments below, please. that it? No. Oh. Okay. Doesn't matter. Alright. Cool. Then let's go on. Okay. Um, ultimate set and cross check. I'm just going to use the B button for that. But it's 2992 today. We've got fair weather conditions here. Okay. Uh, flight plan enter. So that is going to become interesting now because since the latest um, sim update 14 we can actually do this stuff with the keyboard now so we've got kbfi where we're going to depart from boeing field king county and our destination is going to be kpdx portland oopsie okay here we go k p d x Okay, Portland. Enter. Enter. Okay. So then, procedures. And we're going to go for the arrival at first. And now things are getting interesting again. So. Helen 6. That really sounds like something we should fly, doesn't it? I mean, with the Mount St. Helens in the area. But we are going for the Crater 2 arrival today. Here we go. Crater 2. Enter. And our landing runway is going to be one zero right. Here it is. All right. So transition from Bowser. Here it is, and that is the entire route of flight that we are going to go for today. So load that up. Thank you very much. And then procedures, approach, and it's going to be ten right. We'll fly the ILS approach like that with radar vectors and we'll do the entire rest of the stuff here later so let's just load it in 
Here we go. Yes, thank you. Okay. So that's our route of flight loaded. The SID is going to be simply radar vectors, which is what they mostly seem to do here at Boeing Field, according to the information I could find. All right, so assume temperature, we are not going to use any, and um, landing field elevation that, as far as I'm aware, should be down here, but for some reason it isn't. So probably is still going to be added. Weather radar standby. Yep, that's fine. We don't have weather radar installed here. We just have the um, satellite overview. Oh, come on, Navigraph. I did connect you earlier. But in that case, let's just quickly connect the Navigraph charts again. Because it is rather nice to have them on board. Now, for the Navigraph charts, you do need the additional Navigraph um, plugin that you can download from their website. So that it works with the... Um, so that it works with the G1000 avionics here. Okay, but that is all we needed, perfect. Right, very good, so takeoff speeds and acceleration altitude, that is what you can get from their Discord. We're in a medium-ish way today, let's just have a very quick look into here. So we're at 8,600 pounds, we do have data for 8,500 pounds, so that's what I'm going to use. So, timer and references, here we go. So, V1 is going to be 88 knots. V rotate is going to be 89 knots. And then V2 is going to be one uh, sorry, 96 knots. Here we go, 96 is in. And then finally, in order to make things perfect, flap retraction is at 119. So let's go ahead and take that speed bug. Interesting, which we can't seem to be able to set yet. Okay, well, in that case, Toga Click Spot is inoperative, unfortunately. That is really a pity, because it should be available now. But yeah, in that case, um, let's just put the flight directors on, really. Give it level change mode, and um, now we can set it. So we're going to put 119 in to here. Oh, sorry, actually, it's supposed to be 180, I believe, for the initial climb up to the transition altitude, and then 200 above that. Technically speaking, we're supposed to turn that on only in flight, so... Yeah, I tell you what, we're going to follow our official procedure, so we are, we'll not be able to set a speed bug then, but okay, so be it. And for the altitude, I suppose we just go to something like 5000 initially. Something worth mentioning? Setting the altitude is very slow. What you see right now is maximum speed at which we can actually set it. So that is something that may need a little bit more work from the developers in the uh, future. I do surely hope they are going to work on that. Okay, finally, common nav setup. Let's do 1 to 2.8 active on COM1 and 1 to 1.5 on COM2. That would be our standard communication setup then for a VATSIM flight without air traffic control available. Okay, and here we are. And for the radios, I just want to get rid of the um, ILS frequency, so I'll just put that VOR active. CDI down here can go to GPS already. And with that, P PFD options, I do want my wind option 3. I do want my DME bearing 1 and nav 2. And finally, for the transponder, let's go ahead and set some... I have asked walk in here because hey, and that should be mostly it. Okay, cool. So, um, with that, the before start checklist is completed down to immediately prior to engine start. Okay, so I'd say with that done, let's have a very quick look at what we are going to do for the takeoff. So, let's do the takeoff briefing. Um, a runway today is going to be 3 2 left with a left turnout to the uh, first ANAV waypoint, radar vectors. We can start our engines over here, turn out to the left, and then Alpha 10 is going to be a fine intersection for our takeoff on 32 left. Then thereafter, let's have a very quick look on the NAV display. Oh, how do I get out of that again? Shouldn't there be a button to leave the um, chart menu down here? I do believe there should be. Well, in any case, that's how we can get out as well. 
Okay, so um, if we set the range up, you can see departing up to the north, it's going to be a radar vector somewhere around SeaTac uh, Airport. And then eventually we'll probably proceed out to Bowser and uh, climb to a cruising level of 21,000 feet or 22,000 feet. Okay, so that is our plan for today. And what we can do and what I really like to do is if we go down here on the um, IFR and VFR charts, now we scroll all the way in. Then we got a safe taxi. That's just lovely, isn't it? I really love that. It's a pity that so many people actually don't know this option exists, but it does, and it's really useful. Okay, cool. So, with that, we are pretty much set up for our flight, and we can go ahead with the immediately prior to engine start checklist. Okay, so, when we are about to do that, the door is closed. I don't remember actually closing it, so just for you guys to see it. This is how you open the door, and this is how you close the door. Easy and straightforward. Can't really do much wrong, and in case you have no idea, then you can always just read the instructions that you've got on the airplane down there. Okay, cool. So, let's take a seat again, and then we'll do the immediately prior to engine start checklist. Doors closed, battery voltage, it's 24.1. We definitely need to um, proceed with our engine start, otherwise we're going to run out of power. Okay, IFE off. Signs and outlets. I do believe those were located down here. Yes, they are. Okay, no PD and seatbelt signs are on. And as I promised you earlier, this is what it looks like when they're both turned on in the cabin. Pretty nice. See that stuff modeled. Okay, so air conditioning in the auto. And that is up here air conditioning mode auto. And ADS and AOA heater on, that's located down here, and, well, auto, I should say. Okay. By the way, why is this off, auto, off? Shouldn't that be on on the other side? Probably a little texture bug there. Okay, doesn't matter, though. So, let's go ahead with the engine start. We'll begin with engine number two. So, ignition comes on, start switch to start, and the rest happens automatically. Okay, so that is a good start on engine number two. Let's turn on the generator so that we start um, charging our batteries again, and then we'll do engine number one. So I've got N2. Ignition is on with both igniters, that's interesting, but I'm not sure what the exact conditions are. Okay, fuel flow, ITT, N1 is increasing. Looks like a good engine start to me. Okay, we've got two good starts now. Clear disconnect, clear signal on the left, uh, on the right hand side with a pin and have a good day, bye bye. After start checklist, engine instruments checked, ground power unit disconnected, we never had one. Okay, ELEC email, I do believe that's the one down here, is guarded, but we'll turn the generator on over here. Okay then, flight control track, full down, full up, full left, full right, and neutral. Okay, flaps, we'll use config 1, then takeoff temperature, ATR, verified ice protection off, and off block time recorded after start checklist complete. Alright, so that looks like a good engine start to me, then we'll just taxi out to the left, and then we're already at the holding point. So, tax light coming on, park and rack coming off, let's go ahead and take that airplane going, and the ignition I'll put back into auto. Alright, clear left hand side, clear right hand side, taxi. So just a little bit of power here as you can see, about 40% and the airplane taxis quite nicely with that. So many vehicles and so much stuff here on the ramp, really gotta make sure that we don't run into anything accidentally. Okay, but that's looking good.
Okay, clear left side. Clear right side. It does seem to me that the airplane suffers from the same uh, tiller bug at um, taxi speeds greater than a few knots, like for example the um, 737 does. So when you are um, trying to make a turn at speeds higher than just a couple knots, then the tiller is just going to block out and you don't get sufficient uh, steering. Not exactly sure what is causing that. But, um, yeah, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Okay, originally I briefed we'd go here, but I tell you what, let's go full length. Just because going field is looking so good. That's one, that one's from the Wiki design, or however you pronounce them, by the way. So, it's called Boeing Field, and Boeing does have a delivery center over here, which we'll fly past when we're immediately uh, airborne. But it's also the General Aviation Airport of Seattle, so if you are operating private jet in Seattle, then chances are this is where you are going to land. In the back there, that's the Boeing Center. Something I do seem to notice is that the um, Phantom seems to have the, a similar issue to the... Um, to the Mustang in that it is very loud on the outside while being a uh, moderate if not to say very good on the inside okay let's do the before takeoff checklist uh, down to the line brakes checked takeoff configuration checked flight instruments checked cast messages checked before takeoff checklist down to the line complete okay immediately prior to takeoff ice protection set well what do we have down there it's just literally wing stabilizer, inspection, engines, and the ADS and AOA is automatic. Leave the windshield heat off for now. Let's see if we can observe any effects. Okay, a light set, timing record before takeoff checklist complete. Okay, are you guys ready? Then let's go ahead and line up. Hard to see anything really. Okay, clear on the left, clear on the right, and this is full tiller input now. So, as you can see, it is really limited when we are um, taxing at speeds faster than a few knots. Okay, 32 left, that's our runway. Alright, so. Transponder, Alt, and Timer, Start, Take Off. Match that heading bug. Okay, Power Set. Eighty knots. V1 rotate. Positive climb. Gear up. According to the manual, we are going to pull up the flight director modes at uh, 500 above the ground. So that's basically now. Heading, level change. And then we're looking at an initial climb speed of 160 knots. Like so. Okay, your damper on, autopilot on. Let's have a quick look from the outside and mind your ears, guys. So, that's what it looks like. Alright, this is much nicer. Cool, then we're going to start our left turn out. Let's make it heading 210 initially. We'll stay clear of um, Seattle Tacoma Airport. Okay, heading 210 is set. Flaps up. Okay. 
so let's set our climb thrust and before that I'll just put the altitude up a little because on some tests I did have some problems setting climb thrust so we're pulling this back all the way into the um, climb setting now around about okay it works very good then I don't know what happened on my test flights but now it seems to work just fine okay mind your ears again Okay, and back to the inside. So let's go ahead and climb all the way to cruise level, and we'll make it 220. Nice rate of climb that we're getting out of the airplane over here. We should accelerate a little bit more. So 180 is supposed to be our climb speed. We can do 200 as well. Both is gonna work. Normally you would uh, do 200 once you're above the transition level, but since it is so high in the US, We'll just go 200 straight away. Okay, so, nice reaction on the autopilot, by the way. It's not too aggressive, but it is still responsive. So, I kind of like that. Okay, should be more or less clear. Let's turn to the left and go direct to that first waypoint. So, flight plan, Bowser, direct to... Enter. Activate. GPS. Okay, looking good. So, 200 knots, we're still doing 2,600 feet a minute. That seems quite reasonable to me. I got the sun straight ahead there. But I don't think we have a sun shield at the front. We do have them at the side, though. So, down here we can uh, pull up the um, sun shields very strong reflection on that one but over at the front of the plane I don't think we have any no okay well so be it we can live with that okay so passing 10,000 lights are coming off then let's do the after takeoff checklist. Landing gear checked up, flap zero, thrust levers, climb, yaw damper on, and pressurization. And here it is, checked. Okay, after takeoff checklist complete. Then we still got the climb transition altitude checklist, but that's about it. So, in terms of checklist, as I mentioned earlier, I did use them from my iPad. But you do have them all down here as well, so you can just pull them out over here and use them straight from inside the cockpit, which is a very cool thing when you're flying in uh, virtual reality. But uh, since when I'm recording I can't do that, I will just continue like that. Alright, so... At Bowser we already enter the star into Portland. So I do suppose we'll just let the airplane climb over here and while it's climbing we're already going to grab a couple charts for the arrival. So star charts. Trader 2 arrival from Bowser. I just love how it automatically picks the correct charts. Navigraph really did an awesome job with that. And I'm not just saying that because Navigraph is sponsoring my charts but I'm actually saying it because I really like how they're doing it and because charts simply are such an essential element for uh, any flight, really. Okay, so it's from Bowser to Helens, above 10,000. Suppose we can pull that up over here as well. So Bowser, Helens, Crater, Hiker. Now we said we're gonna land on runway uh, 10, and it pro should probably be 10 left. I guess I still have to change that. Well, let's just change it now. So, approach, ILS, give me 10 left, please. Radar vectors, put the minimum in later. Load, yes. Thank you. Alright.
So that's that, then let's go for the approach. Oh, interesting, we still got the original 10 right over there. Well, let's just change it. We're looking for 10 left. So what do we have? Frequency is 11.3, are active already. 103 on the course and 293 the minimum. Okay, we only got steps of 10, so we are going to use the minimum at 300. Alright. Cool, then let's get rid of those takeoff speeds here. Okay, so let's uh, pick up the landing speeds once we're actually in cruise. About to reach transition altitude, but we had 2992 on the ground already, so not gonna be much of an issue here. Okay, so, um, nonetheless, let's quickly do the transition altitude checklist. So, I've got altimeter set cross check, that's 2992 set three times. What we can do is just go over here, um, PFD options, stun a barrow. Oh, it says standard barrow, even though 2992 still is 2992, but hey. Okay, um... So, science and outlet. Suppose we can turn them off. Okay, IFE. As required, light set, windshield heating on. Okay, so windshield heating is coming on. And that's a, um... Transition altitude climb checklist complete. All right, so two and a half thousand feet to go. I'll say approaching already. Got like a hundred miles to run, so we'll roughly need like sixty-six miles to go down. So it's going to be about forty miles or so till we start our descent. And looking at this. Top of the sand, five minutes time. It's gonna become a little bit less since we're still climbing a bit, so the top of the sand on here is always calculated from the present altitude, since you can't tell it your uh, planned cruising altitude. Vertical speed, 1000 to go, 1000 feet a minute. All right, and while we are still um, Climb the last thousand. Let's just go back into the cabin for a second and see what it looks like from here. Because this is quite cool, isn't it? I really like the looks outside of those uh, passenger windows. Now let's see what it looks like flying backwards. That must be such a strange feeling. But this is it. Flying backwards. I really hope I never have to do it in the real world. Even though, if I was offered a ride on a business jet on the condition of uh, sitting on one of those backward seats, I'd probably still do it. And that's another advantage. If you actually crash that airplane, on here at least you're not going to slam your uh, head into anything. Contrary to when you're sitting flying forward. But, uh, well. So, let's have a quick look into the loo as well. Most important part of the entire airplane, I suppose. They even got a window! But I tell you what, that gotta do one of the best views in the world while you're shitting. It really gotta be. Okay, well. I've seen worse toilets. I've definitely seen toilets which didn't have such an excellent view outside. Man, sometimes 30 degrees of bank looks really steep. Well, from the cockpit, we're all so used to seeing that. But then when you go 45, then it's like, oh boy. Okay then, so. Back into the cockpit then. 
So, top of the sand in 44 seconds. Well, I'm probably going to accelerate a little bit further, since I do want the ability to um, see what kind of cruising speeds we are reaching up here. Also, quick look over here. Talents should be above 11,000, not at 11,000. Trader at 13, that's the first restriction that we really want to care about. Let's make it quick. Trader at 12, because we need a cross hiker below 9,000. Okay, so we're going to delete that Talents restriction. And trader we'll do at 12,000. Can we just overtype this? Yes. So, that's 12,000. Enter. Okay, new top of descent in two minutes. That is perfect. That's what we wanted to see. Excellent. So, in terms of fuel, we'll use like uh, 300 pounds of fuel to get up here. Fuel usage now is in the region of about 1,000 pounds per... Um, hours so overall we're looking at roughly three hours of the flight time so mark point six one well we could just reduce that to uh, cruise power though go down here maximum cruise here we go so let's do what business jets usually always do We'll just max it out and see what we're going to get. In any case, this is about 370 knots right now. With the wind coming exactly cross, so no influence on the wind. So roughly 370 knots is what we're getting off this airplane. Which is quite alright if you ask me. It is quite alright indeed. Okay. Hello, FS Realistic. I just had to kill it because my um, zoom got stuck. Alright, that's looking better. So, cool. Approach on the top of the sand, half a minute to go. Let's go ahead and select our altitude down. And then next up we're looking at uh, 12,000 feet for Crater. And thereafter 9,000 for Hiker, which we could, I suppose, just set as well already. Well, let's start uh, setting it down to 9,000 on the VNAV. Okay, VNAV capture. We don't have an auto throttle here, so we got to reduce our speed manually. I do plan to keep it somewhere around 270 knots or so. Okay, and I suppose we can just um, adjust the high car restriction as well. We're looking for 9,000 over there. Enter. Okay. So, right at the barber pole, that's where you usually fly business jets. Looking good. Okay, we're clear to an altitude. Set altimeter 2992. 2992 cross check passing 10,600, or 20,500, I should say. Now, checked. All right, and we're on the way down again already. That was rather quick, I have to say. Let's have a look at that. Looking pretty cool outside. I am using the default uh, fair weather with a few clouds weather theme over here, by the way. Primary reason for doing that is just because it was uh, almost overcast in Seattle when we departed, but I really wanted to feature Boeing Field once, and it is just that perfect business jet airport for uh, flying in the Seattle area, so that's why I went for the um, few clouds weather theme of the simulator. It is worth saying, really, that I do really like those default weather themes, so they look excellent, be it the few clouds theme that we've got right now, or the scattered, which is normally my favorite. All of them are doing a really good job. So, if you don't want to use real weather for a while, using uh, those default themes actually is a real option. I do like them. I do really like them.
Okay, descending through transition altitude. Let's turn the lights on and let's turn the uh, signs on. And let's see, we sure enough have a checklist for that, do we? Oh yes, we do. Descent checklist, windshield heating on, pressurization, yeah. We can't really set the landing field elevation, so not sure where to check for that. And interestingly enough, our cabin altitude's remaining at uh, cruise altitude as well. Well, so be it, huh? Can't change it. Okay, um, icing conditions very far, landing speeds set. Okay, that's a good point that we could still do. So we departed at eight and a half thousand pounds. That means for our um, descent, we are just going to use the default um, eight thousand five hundred pounds as well. It's going to be a landing config three, and we do have values for eight thousand three hundred pounds. Okay, then let's use those. Just gotta disable FS Realistic here again for a moment because it is stuck with um, freezing my zoom. And all of a sudden the windshield noises are gone as well. So this is how the plane sounds by default without FS Realistic. Personally, I really like FS Realistic to be on though. For those sounds. Okay, so, um... Let's see, the approach is going to be at 8,500 pounds, 100 knots. And that is on already, and VREF is going to be 94 knots, is on as well. Okay, very good. And we need a landing distance of about 2,523 feet. Okay, cool. So, that's that stuff set. Then let's quickly continue that checklist. Landing speed set, down to transition level, then we can do the next... Um, one as well. Altimeters, setting trust checked, IFE off, science outlets... Uh, on PD and belts, just set those before pulling out the list. Lights on, fuel transfer. Let's see, that should be located um, over there. Is pushed out. And approach braking complete. Transition level checklist complete. Next up is before landing, which is just gear flaps, your damper. Okay, perfect. So we are done with that. And let's turn FS realistic on again. And here we go again. Alright, cool. So, let's just move to the outside again. So, mind your eye, mind your ears, everyone. This is gonna get a bit louder now. Look at that. Isn't that a beautiful aircraft? Let's use the opportunity to get the perspective that we can never get on the ground, which is the one looking from below. That's looking quite cool indeed. That's looking really cool indeed. I like it. It's a great looking model, that's for sure. Also from the top here. Just look at that. Absolutely love it. It's a very good looking airplane. Just look at those reflections on the uh, on the airframe there. It just looks completely right, if you know what I mean. It just looks right. That looks realistic. Not like the plastic that you sometimes find in a couple of other models. I really like that. I really like that. It's a great looking aircraft. Okay then, back to the inside. Here we are again. Approaching 10,000. Let's continue our descent. What's the star chart saying? So, hike between 9 and 7 and then we got Voodoo. 210 knots and 5,000 feet. Okay. So, speed back towards 250. So, down to 5,000, please. Set. 
So, crossing the hiker below 9,000. Just as we should. Speed, yeah, come on. Let's lose lo those seven knots as well. Let's try and let's try and fly legal today. We always do, of course, always. And now we're diving. Why is that? We're still in V-Path. Okay, not sure. Well, doesn't matter. We can take a couple of degrees nose down. It's not too bad. Five degrees. I've seen much worse on other aircraft. Oh, that looks interesting. This is where I wanted to go. Okay, we're catching the path again. So, can we see Portland already? Not really, huh? It's gotta, it's gotta be on the bank of the river somewhere over there, I believe. Next to that island, isn't it? Yeah, down there, next to the island. So... About there, probably. Would sure enough be nice weather for a visual approach as well, wouldn't it? Okay, so Voodoo 5000 is set, so after that we'll descend to 3000, and from there we'll intercept the ILS. I'll just keep the speed where it is right now. We gotta reduce it towards 210 at Voodoo anyway, which is just four miles from now. So we'll start our speed reduction in a few moments anyway. Okay, so. The standard approach profile for the airplane is initial approach with 200, then 15 miles out, 180, fly the glide stop at 150. However, it is worth saying there that just because the airplane manufacturer wants to see something done as a standard, that doesn't mean that it's always practical to do so. 180 until 4 miles or so is usually going to work perfectly fine on business jets. And it makes you fit into the other traffic into the airline is much better as well because final approach speed yeah about a hundred and uh, yeah about a hundred knots or so okay 210 that's our target speed we need then let's do a vertical speed now minus 1000 feet a minute do we really want to go all the way into the um, downwind or shall we just do vectors to the final Tell you what, let's do vectors to the final. Heading. Procedure. Activate vector to final. You can grab the approach chart down here. Thank you. Okay, getting a bit quick right now. Glide slopes coming in. Let's turn base. Heading 180. 1000 to go. So, standard glide slope intercept. We'll intercept just prior to trail 2300 feet. Set. Glide slope's coming in nicely. 10 miles out is where we're going to intercept the final. Okay, approach is armed. Let's 
Let's go into an intercept heading 130. Then let's start the speed reduction. Now I'm virtually just using vertical speed in order to parallel the glide slope until we've got localizer capture. And here we go. Localizer and glide slope captured. Okay, Goron altitude 4200. Set. Okay, seven and a half miles out. Field is on our 12 o'clock. Roma heading set. So, what's our flap placard speed? 200 knots for flaps 1. Okay, flaps 1. And for the landing gear, 180. Okay, so we'll be able to deploy the gear in a moment and then we'll get it slow as well. Slight tailwind there, a couple knots. That's fine. Actually, is it fine? We need to get that speed below 180. What's the flap 2 speed? 160, okay. Oh, that's interesting. So, it's actually rather hard to slow this down on the final. Come on, just give me 180 knots. I think we're still 4 miles out, but... Slowly need that gear. Okay, here's 180. Gear down. Look at that. Immediately the speed is dropping like a brake. Below 160 we can take the next flap setting. Here we go, flaps 2. Okay, flaps 3. So what's the flap full speed? 145. Okay, flaps full. So, looking good. Autopilot off, the auto emperor off. We'll also take the flight directors off. So, landing checklist. Landing gear down, three greens. Flaps full and your damper off landing checklist complete. And we're stable right at the gate. Excellent. Couple of words on the uh, flight model as we are manually flying the airplane here and we approach in the minimums. It is steerable very accurately. And um, I do kind of like how you can just fly it very precisely. You need rather large inputs in order to control it. I'm not sure how realistic that is. Um, as I've just never flown a Phantom. So I can't really comment on it. Okay then. Let's make it smooth. Power off. Flare. Maybe a little bit higher, I have a feeling, but hey, tell you what. Come on, settle down. Here we are. Man, that was quite a floaty airplane. Okay, gotta let it roll for a little bit anyway. We'll just take the next exit. So, 31 minutes flying, 1 minute flaring, and we are down on the ground in Portland. Scenery from Flight Beam, really like it, I really do, and I've not been paid to say that. Okay, come on, aircraft, that is. Here's where we want to go. Okay, runway is vacated. Alright, so after landing checklist then. Flaps. Up. Lights. Set. 
Landing time recorded, after landing checklist complete. Okay, so... My usual trick, give me... Whoopsie... Those? And here is where we want to go. So straight out into the GA RAM. Clear left side, clear right side. Not not that we would have been too close to the taxiway anyway, but... Uh, we can still pretend good airmanship, can we? Okay, clear on both sides. And we'll just take one of the first uh, stands somewhere over here, right next to the GA terminal. Yeah, this is a full tiller input, by the way, so as you can see, it's uh, not all that strong. Now I'm steering completely opposite already. The plane does take a while to react. If you use differential braking like I did just now, then you can easily get it to um, go where you want to go. Okay, here we are. And here we are. Okay, pack and set. Now a little unfortunate, um, the checklist just seems to end over here. So if you go down to the equipment, then you do get your uh, lovely takeoff and landing data, or just the landing data, but you don't get any shutdown checklist in here, and not in the manual either. So I do suppose that means we just gotta improvise our shutdown. So, um, yeah, let's do generators off, engines off, ignition off, Now, pressurization can stay, huh? Put the bleeds off, heating off, ADS off, hydraulic pump off, fuel pumps off, ELT. Yeah, let's leave it. Okay, signs off, and that's about it, my friends. Okay, we made it. So, batteries off. Oh, come on. Yeah, continue, please. Thank you. All right, and here we are. We made it. Now, what's my uh, first impression, then, of the Coxpur Embraer Phantom 100? Now, very nice first impression, I have to say. Um, Well, let's do something about that. All right, that looks better. Um, yeah, my first impression really is that um, it feels... More mature than the uh, first release of Coxpur's previous aircraft, the uh, Citation Mustang. And we all know what the Mustang turned into, which uh, became quite a fun and flyable aircraft. So, therefore, I am very positive that right now there's a little bit of stuff that needs some work on the Phantom. For example, not every switch has a click sound attached to it. And maybe they can work a little bit on the balance between um, the volume of the engines on the outside and the engines on the inside so that it doesn't kill your ears every time you're flying it. And um, I did see that some people are complaining about the airplane's low responsiveness on your controls. Now, a little word on that, if I may. If we just go back into the cockpit, you've seen that I said on the approach that I could control the airplane really well. Now, here's why. I'm now taking my uh, Thrustmaster Boeing yoke and I'm going to do 45 degrees of input on the Boeing yoke, which looks like this. As you can see on the Embraer control column, it is much less. This is full input now. So when you're doing just small inputs, then you're getting only minor inputs on the control column in here. So you may want to increase your um, controller's responsiveness in the MSFS settings a little bit. So what I usually do is... I'm playing with the settings so that my um, yoke in the real world matches the movement of the yoke in the simulator. And when you do that, aircraft do tend to fly incredibly well. And that's the case with this one as well. Alright, so that is it for today's video then. Overall, a uh, really recommendable aircraft. Costs, I believe, 32 bucks or something the likes. And for that money, it's certainly a nice airplane you get. Now, obviously, the working title G1000 is just an excellent tool that we've got in this airplane. But so far, most of the systems that I can judge 
from um, this flight do seem to do mostly what they're supposed to do. So overall, maybe a little bit of enhancements in the manual would be nice so that we can actually get ourselves a good um, idea of how to fly the airplane. Like I said, for example, in the pre-flight procedures when it just says electrical panel check, then yeah, what am I checking for? You know, would be nice to have an expanded checklist that actually tells us all the what all those checks mean and how to carry them out. So that is my uh, main points that I have on this airplane so far. Overall, for the price that it comes at, 32 bucks or something the likes, really recommendable. And all I can say is that I'm sure you're going to have a blast flying this. Excellent climb performance there, 2,600 feet a minute just uh, after takeoff, and even 2,000 feet a minute at flight level 200, so climbed very, very well, and overall a really fun and enjoyable airplane to fly. Now, that's it from uh, my part. I do look forward to see you all again on the next one, and in the meantime, if you did like the video, be sure to leave a like in YouTube as well, as it really does help out the uh, channel. Also, be sure to leave a comment to let me know what you think of the Phantom 100, and... If you have any suggestions on what I can improve in my videos. Finally, if you really like what I'm doing, I would appreciate a small donation through the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below. But until then, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and see you all again on the next one.